Aloha, this is Iolii with Iolii Art. Today's topic will be watercolors and Sumi ink, the supplies and step-by-step -step uses of it. No one told me, and I had to do a lot of uh, trial and error when choosing my brushes and choosing the medium that I would use, because there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of expensive stuff, there's a lot of cheap stuff, and then there's a lot of stuff that don't work. Um, if you want to take and really get into painting and art, which is my passion, I love it, it's a really good outlet for stress. It's a really good outlet for um, being able to deal with um, emotional uh, issues and a really great way to express yourself and a great outlet. Um, Right now, my table here is com completely jam-packed with a lot of different items and supplies. We have some paints that I had received years and years ago uh, that was in a kit type thing. If you uh, look at them, they kind of set side by side, and then they had a whole bunch of uh, different other types of mediums. And then on the other side, it had a whole bunch of pencils. It was a case in a case. I've used these on about 30 to 40 different paintings and I still have a lot of them left over. So they lasted a really good long time. They were this these this style actually let me be able to find the joy in painting. This is a more expensive cake type. This is called cake by the way. Whereas this watercolor is called liquid. It comes in a tube. Um and you have to uh, open it up and then pour it out and you have to use a palette like this. Um, you use very little. You put a little dab. In fact, I'll show you right here. And you don't want to use a lot because it, it's going to water up. Okay, I actually I want to put in too much again. Um, and they can last a good long time. That's one good thing that I love about watercolor is that it lasts a long time. Um, I'm going to drop a couple of droplets of water in there. Sometimes you will have a, always need lots of water so that you can clean your brushes, so you can transfer from one um, medium to the other or color to the other. Um, I'm going to set these aside. When it comes to your brushes, you can get a whole bunch of um, inexpensive brushes that are that work really well. These are synthetic brushes. Um, they come in different shapes and sizes, round and flat. And on the back of the little kit that you'll buy the brush in, it will actually show you what brush does what when you're um, messing with it and how it will react to the paint. Um, then you have expensive brushes like these here. These are expensive brushes. Um, and, but you got to be careful. Even though it's an expensive brush, um, they will break on you. Uh, I like to travel. I do a lot of my painting while I'm outdoors. And so I have busted this one. You can see here. This is a Sumi ink brush, which I will get into that a little later. Um, this one busted all together. What's interesting about Sumi ink is that it's a, a soot base ink. This is um, the one style of um, uh, Sumi ink and you use a bowl and it will take and use water to uh, get that all um, loosened up so you'll have the soot base ink. To give you an example what soot base ink will actually look like when you're done working with it. Um, is just as a mixture of soot base and watercolor. The um, koi is done with the soot base which gives a nice gray. It's really hard to get gray in watercolor because it becomes very flat. Okay, uh, This was done with watercolor and sumi ink. Um, this one here is another. These are done on watercolor paper or Bristol paper. And you can get inexpensive watercolor paper that works wonders at Hobby Lobby or Michaels 
or Walmart, depending on where you are located. Um, my other favorite paper to wor work with is rice paper. It, I love the feel of it. It's really uh, smooth on one side and uh, rough on the other. And it comes in a roll that looks like this. And you can only re get this from uh, Hobby Lobby or you have to buy it online. Um, the look on of watercolor paper compared to um, assuming ink paper or I mean rice paper is very very different. You have one you want it to have this bleeding effect and the other you want it to be more like a push art where you push the soot around. But when you're working with watercolor um, paper and watercolor and, and the soot, you don't want them to bleed back and forth to each other. So when it comes to um, watercolor, you might, for when you're mixing with the soot, you might want to use the Chinese uh, watercolor, the Chinese painting, because it's got a soot in it as well compared to the just pigments that are here. These are more sooty, but it's smooth, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, let's see. The, um, let's pause this for a second while I get the other one. <laughs> 